I want to read to you a somewhat long passage of what William, uh, William Barclay wrote about this verse because I think it's exactly what the Bible says about God's judgment. William Barclay wrote this. John has just said that it was because God so loved the world that he sent his son into the world. Later, he will go on to show us Jesus saying, for judgment I came into this world. How can both things be true? It is quite possible to offer a man an experience in nothing but love, or for that experience to turn out a judgment. It is quite possible to offer a man an experience which is meant to do nothing but bring joy and bliss, and yet for that experience to turn out a judgment. Suppose we love great music and get nearer to God in the midst of the surge and the thunder of a great symphony than anywhere else. Suppose we have a friend who does not know anything about such music and we wish to introduce him to this great experience, to share it with him, to give him this contact with the invisible beauty which we ourselves enjoy. We have no aim other than to give our friend the happiness of a great new experience. We take him to a symphony concert and in a very short time he is fidgeting and gazing around the hall, the, the hall extremely bored. That friend has passed judgment on himself that he has no music in his soul. The experience designed to bring him new happiness has become only a judgment. This happens, this always happens when we confront a man with greatness. We may take him to see some great masterpiece of art. We may take him to listen to a prince of preachers. We may give him a great book to read. We may take him to gaze upon some beauty. His reaction is a judgment. If he finds no beauty and no thrill, we know that he has no he has a blind spot in his soul. A visitor was being shown around an art gallery by one of his one of the attendants. In that gallery there was a certain uh, certain masterpieces beyond all price, possessions of eternal beauty and unquestioned genius. At the end of the tour the visit the visitor said, "Well, I don't think much of your old pictures." The attendant answered quietly, "Sir, I would remind you that these pictures are no longer on trial." but those who look at them are. Now, some of you may be thinking right now, that was kind of a long, boring quote, Dr. Chris. I can't believe you read that whole thing and made us sit through it all. But that's exactly what William Barclay was talking about. See, I found what he wrote to be so incredibly true and uplifting. And I wanted to share it with you so that you could be uplifted by it as well. But no matter how much I want you to do that, I can't make you appreciate it. And in the same way, Jesus is the light of the world. And his light shines in our darkness. But many still prefer prefer to hide in the darkness. But our dark darkness cannot overcome them. 